This example needs ply read, and if you haven't already got it, you can get it with this URL. The ply read function is the code down the bottom here. So if you just copy paste this into MATLAB, edit ply read. If you don't already have it, then you can paste it into here. Now, the, for the first project, I'm going to be loading a cube that's been painted in Blender, and I'm going to be calling it cube.ply. So we'll open Blender up. Blender already has this default cube available. Uh, I'm going to paint the vertices. I'm just fast forwarding through this bit here, but as long as each of the vertices has a color, it doesn't really matter actually if it has a color, even if it's white. Uh, then we're going to export that to a Stanford ply file, call it cube.ply. And now in MATLAB, ply read will open up, return faces, vertices, and vertex colors. I'm stepping through a for loop for X offset, Y offset, so that I can place these at four corners. I'm going to turn the cam light on so that you actually get proper rendering. Then uh, axis equal. Hold on because we're going to be adding extra things later. So we're adding the table now from this website. It can be downloaded here. Pretty much any of the models on this website, as long as they're ply file or STL file or object file. This one is an OBJ file. I'm going to load it up first in MeshLab. There's a few operations we need to do to it. So first of all, we'll just have a look how big this thing is. It seems to be in centimeters or perhaps even some other units. Uh, but we want it to be around about a meter or so so that it fits in with the rest of our environment. First of all, we're going to flip swap the, the Y and Z axes so that we have Z up. Now we're going to scale it. We're going to scale it by 0 0.005. That was a value that I found to be to work well. I'm scrolling in here and clicking on the object itself to center it. So now those measurements seem to be reasonable. One more step is that we're going to simplify it by doing quadratic edge collapse decimation. We want it down to 2,000 faces where it was originally about 50,000. So I export this to apply file. Just use the default options. Delete that cube now and we're going to import the apply file, the table.ply. Uh, once again, we're going to do vertex painting. You can do this however you want, but just having red and browns. Export this again to a ply file called table.ply. Then we continue on with this, this MATLAB function, which is going to load it once again, faces vertices, and then plot that with trisurf. Uh, so this time we want to get a robot. So I just found this robot model of R2D2. So once that's downloaded, we can unzip it. It also is an OBJ file, except this time I'm going to be able to load it directly into Blender. In fact, you could do most of these operations in Blender, but I'm just showing that it's possible to do some of them in MeshLab. So select the object. You can see that the textures are really good, but in actual fact, we need the vertices to be painted. So we can use this texture paint so that the colors are similar to the original texture, but you could do much more detailed vertice painting if you wanted to. For the purpose of this exercise, we just wanted to get some color on the vertices, saving it called R2D2. Then we continue on with this MATLAB function. Once again, loading another set of vertices and faces and colors. Plot that in. Happens to be on top of the table. You can see that we're getting all the triangles loaded in and also we're uh, getting the colors. In this case, we want to add something that we can move around. Blender has quite a number of objects that you can import in. So this is one. This is a monkey's head. This time we're going to subdivide the vertices and we're going to paint it. Uh, this way we have lots more vertices. This will mean it's slower to render in MATLAB, but also means we'll actually have slightly finer detail with the colors. So this one also exported to a 
apply file, monkey.ply. Continue on there, first checking what the, the number of vertices are because uh, we're going to use that later. Then we're going to create that patch. We've got a transform for moving forward, a transform for rotating about the z-axis and then we're going to keep track of that monkey pose so that we can keep on multiplying the monkey vertices by that monkey pose as we step through that uh, for loop of a thousand iterations. So hopefully that's been useful for you. There's all sorts of options you could also export from other programs but in this case the main thing we need to do is to change to ply file first.